Hey, welcome back, physics fans. This is a ladder physics, physics 12, static equilibrium. And here's a, a provincial exam question to start off with. A, a uniform 4.8 meter long ladder of 16 kilograms, that's this mass, leans against a frictionless vertical wall as shown in the diagram below. Notice it really highlights the word frictionless. Okay, and we'll talk about what a frictionless surface is all about in just a second. There's two questions underneath that you that I did not copy across. It says, draw the free body diagram, as well as, what is the force of friction, or is the coefficient of friction necessary to keep it in place? So, first, let's draw the free body diagram. Okay, we draw our straight line if necessary. I'm going to maybe use a tool here to draw it. It's going to be similar to here. We have uh, its mass, so it will have a force of gravity pulling down on it. Sorry. It will have a force of gravity pulling down on it. And that force of gravity is attached to the center of that ladder. Why is it to the center of that ladder? Because of this word uniform, meaning it is balanced in the middle. It's all this mass is un uniformly distributed throughout it. Okay, so let's make this a little thicker and reddish and see if I can make it snap in. No, it just wants to snap. Sometimes it gives up and it lets me do that. So it's attached there. What other forces are there? Well, the ground is pushing up on it. The ground is pushing up on it, and that is what we call a force that's applied from the, a surface to an object is called normal. Okay, let's start labeling these so we don't fall behind. This is the force of gravity of the ladder. This is the normal force. Okay. Now, this ladder is pushing against this wall. And the wall will push back on it. Okay. Now, it's a frictionless vertical wall, and that means as it slides down the wall or slides up the wall, there's no friction. Therefore, the force from the wall is only perpendicular. A surface that is frictionless will have no sliding friction along the surface, so the only force acting on it is the normal, which is perpendicular. So these forces don't exist. I'm going to erase those right now because those are... It's going to distract us. Those forces don't exist. So we end up having a force from the wall. If I just gave you that free body diagram and you didn't even tell you it was a ladder, you would be able to quickly tell me that could not be in equilibrium. Because, yes, there's an upward force and a downward force, yes. But there's a left force, but no right force. There has to be a right force to balance that F wall that we just drew. And therefore, where is that left right force going to be? It's going to be at its base. And that is going to be the force of friction. And you could easily tell that if we had put this on ice this morning, as we were getting up this morning and put a ladder on the ground, it would just slip out. So if it's going to move this way, what's stopping it from moving this way? Obviously, a force that way will stop it from slipping. Okay? So there's our perfect free body diagram. Don't ruin it by putting angles in there. Don't ruin it by putting masses in there and stuff like that. But I am going to ruin it. Because, okay, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just copy it across or just do a quick sketch over here. 
or maybe I'll just draw it right on here. So the force of gravity on this picture, this is 16 kilograms. So it's mass times gravity, and its mass is 16 times 9.8, and that's going to be 157.8, I don't know, what is that? 16 times 9.8, 156.8, oh, close, 156.8 newtons. Okay, and nothing else we know. Well, we know a lot more, but not exact masses, that's for sure, yeah, or forces. But we know there's a relationship between FF and the normal force. The force of friction is going to equal mu times Fn. That is the force of friction formula that we got from physics 11. That the force of friction is equal to this coefficient of friction times how hard the surfaces are being pushed together, which is the normal force. Okay, so there's a relationship between them. Now, what else do we have? Well, static equilibrium time. Okay, the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero. That means the forces up has to equal the forces down. Now, the magnitudes of them, they can't be equal, because one is up, one is down, but just the magnitudes, because we, if we add them up, it has to add to zero. So the upward force is the normal force. And the downward force is the gravity. Where do I get this? Well, how do I know to start there? Well, well... I know I'm going to do the sum of the forces and the sum of the torques. That's what static equilibrium is. It's the uh, sum of the forces and the sum of the torques all have to equal zero. So I start with the forces. How did I get that the up equals down row and the normal? Well, I use the free body diagram for that. There's four arrows. The upwards ones have to balance the downward ones. And the normal force, therefore, is 156.8. Wow, we've already got another piece of information. Okay, maybe not that much of a wow. Let's go down to 110, zoom out a tiny bit. Let's do the sum of the forces in the x have to equal zero. That means the forces left has to equal the forces right. Now, again, just in magnitude, really, F left equals negative F right. But we're going to worry about the directions later on, because, or at, not at all, because we already know the directions by looking at the free body diagram. So the F left is the F wall, and that has to equal the force of friction. Okay? We're going to just stop there. There's more to go, but we're going to use this near the end to get what that... Because we know that this is mu n, and we know what n is right now, because that's over here. So we could, But we don't know f wall or mu right now. And if we can get either one of them, then we can get the other, because we have the relationship. Right? We know this one. So we can figure out the other one if we have one more piece of information. Where will we get that other piece of information? The torques. So the sum of the torques equals zero. Now, where will we put the pivot point? We choose where to put that pivot point. Where is it pivoting? 
Well, that's a tough question. Where is it pivoting? Well, the whole thing could rotate if it slides out. So it could pivot anywhere. And we know that we could put the pivot point anywhere because that's what I talked about. We can put it anywhere. We could put the pivot point, could, I'm going to undo all these. We put the pivot point in the middle. Therefore, we get the torque caused by the force of gravity to be zero. But we already have that force of gravity. Why would we make that zero? We could make the torque of the wall equal zero. Some people do that. And therefore, if you do the pivot point up here, the ladder, torque, the weight of the ladder, torque, plus the force of the friction, torque, both in the same direction because both of them are causing it to go that way, would have to balance the normal torque. I stress, though, the easiest is to put the pivot point at the bottom. People are reluctant to do that because, hmm, you're putting the torque caused by the force of friction to be zero, and you might want that information. Okay. But I say it's good to put it there because then we only end up with two torques that are left. Because the torque caused by the normal force and the torque caused by the force of friction will be zero. So I tell you that this is easiest to do it their way because then we only end up with two torques. So we're going to put the torque at the bottom. So the torque, and we'll do counterclockwise is equal to the torque clockwise. The torque counterclockwise is the torque caused by the force of the wall. And that has to equal the torque caused by the force of gravity of the ladder. So this is going to be F times D times the sine of the angle. And the formula is F times D times the sine of the angle. Here comes the tough part. We're going to put F of the wall, so I'll do that in red. F wall times the distance. That's easy. That's the length of the ladder. That's going to be 4.8 meters to the pivot point times the sine of the angle. Oy. Okay, have you thought about it? There is my force of the wall. There is my R. I want that angle. That's the angle that I want. That's going to be the same as that. Okay, that angle and that angle are the same. So that's good. I can do that. I can do that. Sine 65. Okay. Okay. Just as a side note, I'm asking a brilliant person in the class, they volunteer, what is 4.8 sine 65? You don't need to know that. But that's a specific number. That's a very important number. It's a side note. You don't need to know that to solve this, but gosh, if you were given that, you would do that. What is 4.8 times the sine of 65 visually in this picture? One more time. The wall? That is correct. That is the height that it's on the wall. Okay? Because I said this, 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 that would be the opposite, which would be that height. And it's the height that it reaches on the wall. Which is really cool. F wall times the height on the wall. Okay? Didn't need to know that. It helps. So, I mean, that, that makes... Wow, if we had that. F, this is the force of gravity of the ladder which is 
newtons. This is half the length of the ladder. 2.4 meters times the sine of the angle. What angle are we talking about? Okay, this one's a lot harder to see. It's that one right there. There's the radial arm. There's the force. It's the angle between them. And if I go all the way down and make my right angle triangle, there's my angle. What is that angle? It's complementary of the 65, so that will be 25. 25 and 65 equals the 90 degrees. That's what I meant by complementary. So this is sine of 25. Okay. Two aha moments here before we continue on. Two aha moments. What happens if Mr. Curl says, oh, I made a mistake. The ladder is actually 5.6 meters in length, not 4.8. Would this change much? Okay. See if you can picture this. I'm going to erase it in a second. That number is the length, and that number is the length. What's the relationship between it? One's twice as long as the other. That's it. As long as it's uniform. So I didn't really need to put the lengths in there. But if I didn't put the lengths in there, I wouldn't get the numerical torques. I wouldn't get the correct torque numbers. So if I asked what is the torque caused by the wall, you wouldn't be able to get it. Because you didn't use 4.8, you would have just used 2 and 1. That's what I would do. If this is a multiple choice question, didn't have to show my work, I would use 2 and 1. And then if I change the length of the ladder, it's still 2 and 1. Because 1 is always half the length of the other. But it's not multiple choice. It's show me my work. The next aha moment and this is going to be asking someone else that's maybe from this continent. <laughs> I'm glad someone else helped me there. What is this? 156.8. Whoops, nope, not that. My bad. What is this? It is what? It, it's this distance? Almost. It's half that distance. It's half that distance. Because I'm only using 2.4, not all 4.8. So it's half that distance to the wall. Amazing. Let me just uh, erase that. Okay, that said, let's just uh, type in some of these numbers here. Uh, 4.8. Oops, that's not 4.8. That's 4.5. 4.8 times that number. No, 4.8 times the sine of 65. F wall times 4.350 is equal to hundred and fifty six point eight times two point four times the sine of twenty five. So this is a hundred and fifty nine point zero. What are the units over here? It'll be newtons times meters, because that's the newtons and meters, and that's the unit for torque. Then I just divide this by the 4.35, and I get F wall is equal to 
36.56 newtons. Okay, organizing it, we're putting boxes around little things here. We did the sum of the forces in the x and the y, actually the y and the x backwards, and we've done the sum of the torques. So we've done all the static equilibrium on here. We now just go back up and put the F wall number in here, and we can calculate what mu is. We could calculate, but first of all, the force of friction is equal to the F of the wall, which is 36.56 newtons. And now mu is, that's mu, is the force of friction over the normal force. And that's going to be 36.56 newtons all over 156.8 newtons. And so we pull up our calculator again. Of course, I closed it. Here it is. And it's 36.56 divided by the 158, 156.8. And I got... 0 0.233. 0 0.233. What are the units for mu? There are no units. It is a ratio of forces. A normal over a normal, no units. So that is the minimum coefficient of friction to stop that ladder from sliding out, from falling down. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. There's a ladder. Thank you for watching.